Hi guys, I'm Adolfo Ferranda of Nerdstalker. Nerdstalker.com, at Nerdstalker on Twitter, Nerdstalker TV, at YouTube, and all the places in the podcast, okay? So, today we're going to check out my 2018 to do with setup uh, as of March here, and uh, let's get right into it. So what you see here is sort of the graphite interface. I keep it very clean, no colors, really, not many, and uh, no additional images, uh, for all you people with ADHD out there, you know how important it is to keep things really minimal, really basic, so that there's not a lot of distractions, so you don't go down any other rabbit holes, and you can focus and get that deep work done. So what I've become really good at is task execution, which is a good and bad thing, right? So it's kind of the first step in Todoist, where I'm really good at getting sort of the daily stuff done, and as well as like obscure sort of annual or monthly reminder type things that someone would typically forget. Um let's say some sort of checkup for your home for your water heater or a home air filter or something like that right so i have a slew of those type of things that to do has been immensely helpful uh with getting done uh where i th seem to need uh, a bit more work on and and help with is uh things like executing on projects and goals that's what i hope to improve on and perhaps that's something i should refer to carl pauline and his video series for uh okay so this is the setup here and let's get right into it so inbox, I've already processed that for the day. It's my capture all uh, today view. I seem to live in today view for better or worse. Next seven days seem to be my forward planning type of situation. Projects is broken out into two folders, do and incubate. It used to be three with the MIT most important tasks, but uh, I'm not using that anymore. It just, it didn't stick for whatever it's worth. Uh, in do, I have a home personal folder a tickler folder, a day job folder, a nerd stalker folder, a errands folder, a routines folder. So let's open up uh, the home personal stuff. Um, this folder next home projects, uh, it's there. It's sort of legacy now. I don't seem to be using this. It just never seemed to stuck for whatever reason. I have a personal growth project as well. And then I have a tickler project here is sort of a capture all for all sort of tickler things uh, rather than having these things it used to be broken out per project all these things like next thing a tickler for this particular project so it was getting really crazy what i'm finding with tickler what seems to be more beneficial are the usage of labels so getting rid of the tickler folder altogether and just creating a label called tickler and then it goes into whatever particular section it applies to your life whether it's uh, your your day job or your home life or what have you. So I'm I'm increasingly using these labels. In Nerdstalker, I have various projects related to Nerdstalker, and that's sort of it. In errands, I have uh, shopping. So shopping isn't grocery shopping. It's shopping for other things, clothing, hardware, uh, what have you. Whereas this is an IFT integration with uh, the... Amazon Echo. So we're big users of Amazon Echo and with Todoist in particular. And so we'll tell the Echo to add something to our shopping list, for instance. And it's we really specifically use it for grocery items primarily, although it could be like cleaning things as well. Uh, and then in addition, I have a label for particular stores, which I may add on. So Costco here, where I'm from, for a warehouse type of store versus a, a grocery store, something like that. And that that folder was automatically created via an IFT integration, an IFTTT integration, and is automatically given a label of the A word, you know, the Amazon Echo word. I'm not gonna say it because I don't wanna trigger your devices. And then I have routines. This is kind of a new folder for me. And within routines, I have uh, the daily, weekly, monthly, and annual. It's just for sort of organization. We'll see how that sticks. I'm not a big fan of having these multi-folder type views, perhaps having all the routines in this routines project folder with uh, labels with a daily, weekly, monthly, annual may be a better type of solution so I don't have to be moving things around. Big fan of labels. Uh, I used them a lot in Evernote when I was doing GTD within Evernote and it worked quite well actually with uh, with labels and labels or tags as you call them in Evernote. Worked really well and then when I saw Mike Vardy on uh, Francesco Alessio's show, I saw that he was making extensive use of uh, labels and filters, and that's sort of the direction I'm being drawn to and want to move towards. I'm in this hybrid scenario right now where I have both folders and lots of labels and some, some duplicates. 
And then I have things incubate with them, where is the someday maybe folder for probably some of you. And this is where I capture things like vacations and places I want to go to someday. And uh, videos, and videos can capture TV shows, movies I want to watch. And additionally, I'll use uh, labels as well to uh, sort of give them context in terms of like, this is something I want to watch alone. This is something I want to watch with my wife that she would enjoy. This is something I want to watch my, with my kid. Or this is something the whole family perhaps would want to watch together. I'm also a big fan of Agile, the Agile methodology where it comes to Kanban, Scrum, uh, safe, what have you. And so I try to read up on that. And then I have reading. This could be books, audiobooks, whatever. So that's it for my projects. Pretty simple, right? But where I'm getting the real bang for the buck now seems to be in labels. So in labels, I have my typical sort of context labels. Uh, the home, online, anywhere, out, Costco. And this can sort of scale as you want. You, know, you can add them and delete them quite easily. And then I have family-related stuff. And I have automobile, which is I call car, right? Even though it could be multiple cars. And then here's the someday label. And this is what uh, the folder was called incubate. So perhaps I should align those or I don't know. I'm sort of torn between that one. We'll see. I have a tickler label and this one's getting extensive use. And I'm finding more and more using the tickler. Perhaps the tickler folder will one day go away. And then items that are sort of contextually with like your home personal life would live in there. That would also be ticklers and have a, a label of tickler, but we'll see for now. Some some things are sticking, some are. Additionally, I have routines uh, for the routines section that we saw there with the daily, monthly, daily, monthly, annual type of routines. And uh, so these to do doing and waiting, these have to do with a, a product or an application called Trelloist. So Trelloist is um, sort of a combination of Trello and Todoist. And it gives you your sort of Todoist data, uh, pulling in the API key, and exposes your data in a Kanban format via Trelloist is what they call it. And Trelloist.com, you can check it out. And what I've done is I've applied these labels so that they sort of dictate how the columns will display. So if I have uh, items in Todoist that are in the doing status, the waiting status, backlog or to-do status, I give them these various labels and they show up appropriately in Trelloist. Very experimental right now, be warned, until Todoist comes out with some sort of Kanban view, a board view. Uh, that's sort of what I'm experimenting with. So you see the Alexa label right here. And oops, I said the A word, sorry about that everyone. Uh, and that's automatically created by the IFTTT recipe I use to uh, integrate with Todoist. And then the usual contextual computer, uh, shopping, researching, if I need to research things. And then this has been the big win for me. Uh, coming from the Scrum or an Agile world, when you would do estimates, I was never a big fan. I'm more of a no estimates type of person. And I was never a big fan of times, like five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or sizing things in those type of numbers. And trying to estimate time, it's just, it's a bad habit really in the no estimates world, obviously. Uh, so as a compromise, I'm, I'm using this sort of sizing option, uh, extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. And it's really cool. It's working really quite well for me uh, in terms of just executing things when I have the ability, the time, or as some of you would call the energy level to do so, it could be a combination of both. That's why I like this, because if it's a combination of energy level plus time, you could look at it like that or just make it what you will. Uh, it's just a nice label, very flexible, or labels will have extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. And you apply them to your various tasks or projects, whatever. And I could see how filtering and creating various filters with this type of, uh, of uh, element would be quite helpful. So that's pretty much my, my setup for this year. Uh, additionally, some things that I'm sort of moving into is a lot more is leverage the power of the applications that I already own, connecting with things like Evernote, leveraging notes and checklists and things like that. Carl Pauline has a great series and talks about how to integrate Todoist and Evernote. Things with notes, for instance, in the comments of a particular task, you can have a link to a note, an Evernote note, uh, which can open up directly from the application or the web page. And it's worked really great for me. I had a recent trip to the snow and I had a packing list. So on my Todoist, I use a simple link to my, my checklist that I had in Evernote and it's fantastic. Things like Karma and things like that, I'm still not using those in any type of way and they don't resonate. I'm getting to the wish list stuff. So I would like a better view to see how it was completed easily. Uh, I know that you can, you can do it 
in uh, to do is I just like a little more easy because in the Kanban view it's kind of there in a column in Trello for instance you can see your whole everything you've accomplished in a column for a year let's say and also I would like a Kanban or a what you would call a uh, board type of view in Todoist uh, eventually as well. I hope they get that done. As of this recording, Todoist just released pinning to your favorites. I haven't utilized it yet, so I'm just not using it. I'm really happy with Todoist. I really like it. I think it's a fantastic product. The price is right. It's ubiquitous. The mobile application is fantastic. And on the desktop experience, it's wonderful as well. So Todoist, uh, two thumbs up, really great. So my goal is to really improve more upon project and goals within Todoist and executing those rather than just nailing a bunch of tasks off. Thanks so much for watching. That's my 2018 setup. I hope this was of value to you somehow. And you again, my name is Adolfo Franda. You can check me out at nerdstalker.com, at nerdstalker on Twitter, uh, nerdstalker TV. Search for that on YouTube, and that's us. We have podcasts as well. And we thank you for your time.